Hey guys, and welcome back to another cybersecurity versus software engineering video. We have our guest Luca, who also has a YouTube channel if you guys are interested in software engineering topics. I'll link his channel down in the description below. But today's topic is actually from a comment from one of you guys, and that is on work-life balance. So the work-life balance of a cybersecurity analyst versus a software engineer. And there's a lot of juicy questions that we're gonna go into, but first let's start off with our overall kind of like work-life balance experience from our different roles, I guess. So you can go first. I would say overall, I feel pretty good about my work-life balance. I would say in the span of my career, if everything averaged out, it probably come close to about like 40 hour work week that you can typically expect. Of course, there are busy times and then of course there are times where we're not doing much. For example, the holiday seasons when there are cold phrases. So overall, I would say pretty good work-life balance. So I would say some something similar, but my busy periods are kind of like the opposite of his where at the end of the year, we get very busy. Mm -hmm. um, well, specifically with security requests and cybersecurity usually interacts with a bunch of different teams from like HR to marketing yep. to sales to legal. And a lot of requests tend to come in at the end of the year or at the end of the quarter. So actually my downtime is more so throughout the year, like in between those periods of, I don't know, like the beginning and ends of quarters. But for the most part, I think in terms of work-life balance on a regular basis, if I'm yeah. just looking at it from like a very high level perspective, I do think I have pretty good work-life balance. I would say even better than Luca sometimes because I find that overall my team has a really good balance of people who, if someone goes off, for example, they yeah. usually have some kind of document that they'll provide to us and say, oh, um, while I'm gone for the week, uh, here's XYZ thing on my plate that may need follow-up. So it's kind of nice to kind of know, you know, yeah. what things to expect when your teammates are out. As well as, since we know that busy periods are towards the end of the quarters, we'll get a lot of our project-based work done mm -hmm. towards like, you know, the middle of a quarter where things may not be as busy in the ticketing queue. All right, so with that high-level yeah. stuff covered, we're gonna go into some more in-detailed questions, like how stressed we feel at work, mm -hmm. on call hours, if we work on weekends, if we work overtime and things like that. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah, so I know I mentioned like, you know, on average, the work-life balance seems pretty good, like average out to 40. But one thing I do want to mention is, for example, when I joined the team, I was learning. So like, you know, that required a lot of time, but it's not like really challenging amount of work. It's more so like, you know, trying to pick up systems and you do feel the pressure. And mm -hmm. I think what when it becomes hard is when you assign a task and you have some sort of deadline and you're trying to make sure it happens. And when the task is really challenging, you have to keep putting in hours just to make it work. Of yeah. course, like because of that, I had to work on the weekends and then even post the typical nine to five. And that's not something like I dislike. So some people might be like, oh, I don't want to work outside of work. But for example, if I'm outside of work, sometimes I have an idea and then I'm like, oh, maybe this will help me fix the issue I'm running into. Then I would just jump straight into it. It doesn't really matter if it's the weekend. It doesn't really matter if it's past working hour. I still do it and a lot of time I don't really consider those as part of like working because it's also like me trying to learn and then trying to grow as well. So I would say on average I don't have to work as much on the weekend as a mandatory policy but when I do feel like it, for example if I get extremely bored then yeah I'm just gonna hop on and just like look at the code and see what I can do. So yeah I would say like I definitely work on the weekend a ton. I would agree with that. Luca actually works a lot more on the weekends. I don't think I've ever worked on weekend, um, except this one time when I was out for a while and then on Sunday night, I just logged in and checked my email and caught up with a few things because I knew there's gonna be like hundreds of emails waiting for me, but that was like the only time. I don't work on weekends because of an urgent deadline. Maybe I'll stay late on Fridays if you know there's something yeah. really pressing because a lot of deadlines just tend to be Friday afternoons, but I usually, typically do not work on weekends. And I also, don't tend to work that late. Um, the latest I worked is maybe seven to eight. And those are during like the busy periods when I had to get something done with my team. And you know, it's like super, super busy. But for the most part, I log off of work around five or 5.30. Yeah, I probably worked like the very normal 40 hours mm -hmm. a week. But for Luca, he, I mean, I'm not saying this for all things software engineers, but I do think that he puts in definitely more hours. Um, but also because he's just very passionate about coding and you know, it's something that he enjoys doing, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say like the the most chill time period is actually when, for example, you, you finish your product and now at a bigger company, there's a lot of like, you know, legal process, like paperwork that you have to go mm -hmm. through. And 
in order to wait for the approval before you can launch something to like the end user. So during those time period, technically your product is done, so you don't want to make a lot of more changes in case it breaks something. Of course, smaller, minor fix, such as like small bugs or like styling changes, like those can be cherry picked, then that's no problem. So those period where you're waiting for that, it can last anywhere between like a week to two weeks. Where in those periods, all you're really doing is just like, you know, looking to see what can be improved and really think about like what you can do down the line. So those time period, you actually don't really write as much code or do as much like, you know, hardcore work. So I would say those time periods are very relaxing. And on average, around those time period, you can work like, like actually working probably like 20 to like 30 hours. So a lot mm -hmm. more relaxed for sure. Yeah, I think another thing to point out is the fact that my work, even though I have long term projects, um, I also have like a ticketing queue that is yeah. kind of like more than 50% of my day to day tasks um, outside of meetings and stuff, of course. But basically, after I'm done completing my tickets, if someone else doesn't submit a ticket, you know, or send a request for something, then I don't really have anything else to do. And then I go on and work on my yeah. personal projects. I mean, and then I go on and work on my long term projects, um, which you know, those are always there to be worked on. So I think it's a really good balance of, yeah. you know, if you have like more urgent things or tickets, because usually you should respond by a certain amount of time, get them completed by a certain amount of time. Otherwise they become a project because you don't want things to be sitting in your ticketing queue for like weeks. So yeah. typically they're supposed to be short term things and they have a sense of urgency. And after those are done, you work on the long term stuff, which doesn't have as much urgency, even though towards the end of the year and towards the end of the quarter, um, you probably have deadlines that you have to add updates for. All right, so maybe now we can go into how stressed we feel at work because I think that's a big part of work-life balance. Yeah, Sometimes sure. even if you don't work, you know, crazy hours, there may be high periods of stress that yeah. go into your personal life as well. Yeah, I would say like on average, like I work like 40 hours, but I would say overall like stress, like I feel like it's above average, <laughs> meaning like there's more stressful period because I'm also like using like recency bias. Of course, like when you first join, like you already feel stressed because like you feel like behind, you don't know any of the systems. It's a zero to one product, like there's a deadline, you suddenly just like put in a very unfamiliar environment and you have to quickly jump into building things and be productive. Mm -hmm. Like you hear stories about like being pipped and stuff like that. So you're like, oh, I don't want to be in that performance improvement plan area. So like I got to work really hard. And once you get used to the technology and stuff, you become less stressed because like now you become more familiar. Yeah, like I would say like you can really decide and stress is definitely something like that happens a lot. I'm going to say that I am definitely less stressed at work than Luca is. Um, personally, I think the things that used to stress me out the most at work were just like my team, <laughs> like the people that I work with. Um, for example, sometimes I feel like for some people it's a like project that stress them out. Um, but personally for me, it's always like the interpersonal relationships between your manager and your coworkers and your teammates. And like, if you can ask them questions without feeling, you know, yeah. like a burden, um, but those are the things that stress me out the most because I just get really in my head about, Human oh my aspect. gosh, yeah. yeah, I just feel like, oh, this person hates me. They're not gonna respond to me. So I'm gonna have to like find this information somewhere else. And then I follow up with people and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm like bothering this person all day. So yeah those are the things that really stress me out at work not necessarily the work itself but i do think in my current role i'm not very stressed except during those quarter end periods when we have a lot of requests that come in but again we get them done as a team like for example before a holiday weekend we actually got together on our call and we are actually discussing a few things and then i guess you can call him my tech lead um even though they're not really tech leads in cybersecurity, but He's like the most senior person on my team. And he was like, yeah, if you guys have any other tickets, like Sandra, I know you have two of them. Like, do you need any help on them? If we can like swarm together and like bang them out if there's um, anything that you like need help with or if there's any like roadblocks. So I think stuff like that, just knowing that your team is there for you, you know, when you need them. But thankfully I didn't need their help. I was gonna be able to get that done, like be out the yeah. door by like 5.30. I think those things are things that make you feel like, wow, like yeah. this team environment is just so nice. Like it's hard to be stressed when you know that you have teammates that have your back. Exactly. And yeah. like, you know, if you take a day off or a sick day or like go on vacation, things are, you're gonna come back and things are gonna be okay. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that's definitely a big issue, like biggest like pros, like psychological mm -hmm. safety in yeah. the workspace. Definitely make work a lot more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good turn to bring up. <laughs> an official word to bring up. Maybe next thing we can talk about is on-call hours. So like for me, our on-call is like one of the lowest tier, meaning it's only doing business hours. 
So for me, when I'm on call, like I just have to look at the graphs and to try to see if there's like a, any spiking error rate. Like I try to monitor if there's like a huge spike in QPS because sometimes that could be like malicious attacks, like people trying to like do something sus. So like, of course, when you're on call, you also have to make the weekly release and monitor if the prod is broken. And I remember a lot of times stressful things do happen when you're on call. For example, if something stopped working, you need to immediately figure out like what's going on. Like I remember this one time when the prod released, things suddenly stopped working and our end customer, like before I even realized, like already filing like complaints to like our outreach team asking like, hey, this feature stopped working because like they were just using it and it was working. So I was trying to look into the issue. I'm like, all right, I can't resolve this immediately. So I have to do a prod rollback. And while the thing is being rolled back, I quickly realized, oh, it's because the back end, the front end thing got released in sync like there was like a mm -hmm. slight delay so when i was testing it i was like wait this is working so I, I i can't reproduce it so it must be something really really serious so i reverted it but it's kind of like all these things like adds up to the additional stress but of course like overall like we don't have to get dialed in the middle of the night so like that's a lot better i know other teams they get dialed at 3 a.m they have to wake up respond in five minutes and try to resolve all those issues but yeah my team didn't have to go through it we could have signed up for those but no, thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I would say this is definitely a good question to ask like the teammates or manager if you're able to connect with them before you join a team, if on this call. is something that is really important to you. Because personally, I've never had an on-call schedule or on-call rotation, but I know a lot of my coworkers who have. Typically, it's going to be over weekends or holiday weekends. It depends on the team because for cybersecurity, a lot of teams are follow the sun model. So you may have a teammate in EMEA or in Europe, or you may have a teammate in Asia or in APAC. And then, you know, of course, your North American or US team if you're a US-based company. So for the most part, if you have like a follow the sun team then it's going to be a lot easier because you don't have to hop on a call or you don't have to hop on like a bridge line for like a 5 a.m or 4 a.m emergency yeah. because someone else in emia or asia are probably going to get that covered but there are going to be those weekend calls yeah. where maybe there are certain things that go wrong um especially because a lot of teams tend to push updates and stuff or patches on the weekends i don't know if it's the same for software but for like hardware and like windows updates and server updates those are all like at night <laughs> at like 8 o'clock p.m when there's like less traffic so nothing goes down as well as on the weekends when you know no one's really in the office so those are typically the things that tend to go wrong yeah. but i know a lot of times in a lot of companies it's usually the infrastructure team or the sre team the site reliability engineering team yeah. they manage a lot of the uptime and availability as well as the updates for those hardware components and servers. So for the mm -hmm. most part, their on-call person handles that. So I do think that's something to keep in mind because it 100%. depends on your cybersecurity team. Some yeah. cybersecurity teams do have a cybersecurity person on call as well to kind of you know be there in case something goes wrong. Yeah. So it's definitely something important to ask if this is something that is important to you. All right, so hopefully this gave you guys an idea of what to expect in terms of work-life balance for cybersecurity as well as software engineering. And let us know in the comments below any other topics that you want us to compare in terms of cybersecurity versus software. Don't forget to check out Luca's channel, which is linked in the description below. He is almost at a thousand subscribers, so <laughs> you guys should definitely come support. He has awesome content. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye.